can you talk to me a little bit about what the non-medical applications of this thought identification and, and brain machine interface technology might be? The kind of things I think we're going to see are very simple applications that don't need us to kind of read out the full-blown details of a person's thoughts, but something like a person is lying, yes or no, or a person wants to buy a car, yes or no. These kind of applications, I think, are the applications we're going to see. And um, uh, now, we're not there at the moment. We can't, I mean, there are companies claiming that they can already do this, which is, of course, uh, rather misleading. Um, but um, I think because these applications are so simple, simple yes-no questions, we might be able, seeing them in the next 10 or 20 years. And one thing to possibly even kind of uh, uh, an important variable in this is if someone now was to invent a brain imaging device that gets that neural activity at a much finer level, then uh, I think we'd see it even much faster. So uh, these are the kind of applications I think we're going to see. And of course, where we want to think uh, if we want to use them, yes or no. I guess, for example, lie detection, um, not necessarily here in the USA. Um, in Europe, for example, where I live, um, I mean, people are, I mean, they hate lie detectors. They would never want to invade in a person's mental privacy, which I think is problematic, of course, because um, you can also assist an innocent person in demonstrating their innocence. So, I mean, it's... Um, mm -hmm. uh, Similarly, I, I think lie detection is, is, a, is an interesting problem that some people have made overly strong claims about its, its potency. And uh, as these methods get more powerful, uh, there are two issues that come up. One is, will it ever be accurate enough that, that we would have confidence that it's, it's doing it correctly? And then the ethical issue of, is that invasion of privacy and, and notions of the Fifth Amendment? Um, and then also the notion of, could one voluntarily choose to undergo a test and would that be useful? Um, I was always very much against lie detection and that notion of that technology. And uh, I got a rather uh, poignant letter from a person who was in prison in Georgia. He was 60 something year old. And he said, I was really interested in this article I read about your research and also about lie detection. Do you th is that allowed and is there any way I could set up a test? I, I got convicted for a crime that I'm not guilty of. I don't even want to get out of jail. I just want to clear my name. And uh, is there any means for me. And, and I was struck by it and how personally it was written that, uh, you know, we have a lot of people who, who go to jail and, and the system by which we decide innocence or guilt is, is noisy. Uh, how accurate would such a system have to be before we'd consider uh, allowing people to voluntarily take a test? And, and what would our, our, our view of that in the sense that we're, we're reading out a person's thoughts? Would, would we want to go there? Is that reading out an example of testimony, or is it evidence? How, we, we don't know how to think about these, these ideas yet. 